Yeah, we were all one. <laughs> you believe the earth was flat? <laughs> Kyrie, big Kyrie vibes. We're talking Kyrie, about. The earth is flat, big bro. Everything. Uh, <laughs> see, look now, it sounds crazy. <laughs> Everything just felt like the same thing. Everything felt like the same thing. We're all one. <clears throat> um. Ooh. All right, I think it's time to get into it. Let's get in, man. Like I said, it's episode 202 of the Rising Ground Podcast. It's your boy Roderick in the building. Sir Jakar, we here. It's a new week. It's Monday. Yes, it's the first Monday pod of 2023. Wow, I didn't even think about that until you said it. Yeah, we came in 2023 on a Thursday pod. Uh-huh. This is the first beginning of the week of the year. Is this yeah. the first Monday of the year? No, no. Okay, no. we were just gone the last yeah, yeah, yeah. first Monday of the year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so shit, how was your past week, man? How you been feeling? It's been really good. Well, not past week, but weekend type yeah, shit. Type shit. Um, yeah, yeah. Since Thursday, I had a really good <clears throat> weekend. Um, let me think about what I did on Friday. Did we link on Friday? Did I see you on Friday? Mm-mm. Okay, then Friday must have just been cool work, relaxed day, something like yeah. that leading into the weekend. That's what it was. All this week, I'm in the school realm. I keep telling y'all uh, assistant principal type shit. Um, I usually have parent meetings or when it comes to kids getting in trouble, I have discipline committee meetings, um, right. deciding on what the consequence of a student will be. I made sure this Friday there was nothing on my schedule. Um, <laughs> every day this week coming back, I had something to do with a parent or I had something to do with okay. a committee. So look, I was going to ask you that just because it's the first week back. Yeah. It was probably going crazy, right? No, it's actually the exact opposite. Okay, okay. What I will say is <clears throat> they were really crazy the last week going into uh break because it was like, you know what? We've been here the whole semester. We know it's over. We're waiting on it. We're anticipating that bell ringing at the end of the day. They were crazy that whole week. This week, it kind of resets everybody, even the teachers. So even if the kids were a little rowdy, they the- kind of like... They didn't let go of some of their behaviors over the break type shit. Yeah, and the teachers have been gone yeah. for so long that it's like, all right, I can handle this this week. You feel refreshed. Yeah, yeah like I can I can handle y'all acting a little rowdy mm-hmm. this week, but go ahead and get reacquainted with shit yeah. um, and be settled by next week. Yeah, that makes sense too. Uh, just like you said, going back to the kids because, you know, um, leading up to the break, you know you're going to be gone for a long time as well. So that's, Yes, that's two probably, and a half weeks. <laughs> that's probably why they was acting up. Absolutely. You know, you, we used to do that all the time. They they knew that it was about to like be over. What trouble could I get in the last week? All right. Let me show you the last. All right, because you're not going to see me till next year. No, nah, no cap. Thanks but I, I had kids in ISS on the last day of school. Damn. Yeah, that, it sucked because this is the day I was walking through every single class. Teachers got the movies playing. Oh, okay. Got candy, chips. So I'm exactly not. Rotel in every class. <laughs> not Rotel. But I'm going inside of these classrooms. To pick up work for the ISS kids, <laughs> I'm coming back with snacks and shit they would have had on that day. <laughs> Did you eat it? Oh my god! I'm, oh. Mm, <laughs> m- 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 Miss Simmons went crazy for y'all ass. I just <laughs> Miss Simmons, that's funny. Um, but um, Friday, my schedule was clear. I was able to go home as soon as my slated end time yep. was relaxed. Saturday, we had the fight. We'll get into the fight a little bit later, but um. <clears throat> I took shrooms on Saturday, Kari, for the first time in my life. <laughs> I took shrooms. So okay. um, I've been anticipating this trip mm-hmm. for some years now. I just had to build my confidence up to actually take the shrooms. This is probably the wildest shit I've ever done. Really? Kari was supposed to be on this trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, but tell me, you said it was the wildest thing. How come? All right, so... I get over, I take it at my mom's house, which is wild. Yeah, crazy. Um, but I wanted to take it with my sisters. So I get over there because they're over there at the moment. And I break the shrooms out. I really just brought them over there that night because my sister's been begging me to bring them over. She was like, yo, you've had them for so long and you haven't gave them to us. At this point, I'm just going to take them without you. Mm. So I pull them out and I hand her the ones that were supposed to be for her. She just pop some of them immediately and i said oh we're doing this tonight i I didn't know we were doing this tonight i'm not gonna let you go on this trip alone i break off a few pieces um they said that one to three something like that was the micro dose type of shit 
somewhere between like four to nine was where you're actually going to get really high. And then like nine to 16 or 10 to 16, something like that is mm-hmm. when you just, you're, you're going to see shit. You can, things are going to go crazy. Uh, I started with two. <laughs> I was about to say, how many did you take? I started with two. Uh, my sister started with two. I left to go get something to eat. And I came back. The two weren't kicking for my sister. <clears throat> I take two more. She takes two more. So now we're four hour, hour and a half goes by, something like that. I'm still not feeling anything. I come from the marijuana realm. I've been through it and through it with weed. I'm not really an edibles guy because, number one, I've either gotten too high or I've had so many edibles given to me that didn't work to where I thought they were malfunctioning, my tolerance is too high, or someone just decided they put regular snacks in a weed bag and and distribute it as that but they weren't real edibles at all so after about an hour and a half i'm not feeling anything i'm like you know what someone gave us the fakes like we got the fakes i can deal with that though because i didn't pay for the shrooms the wookies yeah we got the wookies they just gave us regular chocolate (laughs) so i'm like fuck it if it is real we gonna find out let's take some more that's pretty wild of you i'm not gonna lie yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm a, I was already at what, like two or four, something like that? Four, I think, at this point. I'm at four. I get the five. I, I'm popping them by one at this point. Sheesh. Don't feel it again 10 minutes later. I pop another one. I'm at six. These are chocolate bars. So I'm uh, now at six, six shrooms, basically. Mm-hmm. Then <laughs> I get to seven. I stop at seven because about two minutes into the seventh, everything starts to change. I just felt like this really heavy feeling come over my body. Keep it 100. Immediately, I said, y'all, I think I took too many. <laughs> my, my mother is not of any ilk of drugs or recreational anything. She barely know. even sips alcohol. She said, you know what, son? I think you're taking too many. <laughs> Mama, I got this. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm, I'm, I, you don't know what you're talking about right here. Right. I'll be okay. Yeah. I didn't have this. Mama was right. <laughs> she was right. She was right. My sister, uh, one of my sisters took six. Uh, I took seven. The other took Jesus four. Christ. Channing, she went to immediately giggling. Like the, the giggle stage of of shrooms. I went through the giggling stage. I laid on the floor. I felt like the floor. I was a part of the ground. You know, mm-hmm. we're all we're all together in this. <laughs> right, right. The weirdest part about it is we all took our shit separately at different times, but I feel like our high synced up, which is really... In unison or some shit. That's no, crazy. no, we were in unison. That was this is yeah. crazy. I sound like one of those earthy like. <laughs> nah, for real. I do, but it's a weird feeling. Uh, yeah, we were all one. <laughs> this nigga, you believe the earth was flat? <laughs> Kyrie, big Kyrie vibes. Fuck, we talking about the earth is flat, big bro. Everything. Uh, <laughs> see, look now, I sound fucking crazy. <laughs> Everything just felt like the same thing. Everything felt like the same fucking thing. We're all one. <clears throat> um, my time perception was crazy. Correct. Yeah, I called Kari. Yep. I there was a point in time where I even got on Instagram Live, which is a horrible idea. Yeah, we got him up off there. Though. He wasn't on there too long ago. Yeah. Um. But. But yeah, you hit me. I called Kari about an hour and a half after I was off of live, and I asked him, "How long have I been off of live?" He said, "25 minutes." <laughs> said oh it hasn't been an hour and a half (laughs) oh shit everything that i did i felt like it had been at least two hours i'd look back five minutes yeah even when you uh because you called me first like before you went on live you actually called me and we right i don't even remember what we talked about but you i was telling you how fucking high i I was was. i could tell you was lit i couldn't it's it's a type of thing where weed alcohol any other recreational drug i haven't taken anything else besides weed lean um but it affects who you are, that type of drug, with like a psychedelic or shroom, uh-huh. you're all there. Everything is there, but there's there's either elements that are heightened, but at the same time, elements that are missing. But okay. you can't really put your finger on what is there and isn't. But you're all there in the head. That's a, I don't even know where to go with that, but yeah. I couldn't make my words mm-hmm. out. Like If you remember, I called you. My sentences yeah, didn't even they, sound they correct. Weren't clear. They weren't clear. They weren't clear. <laughs> like I could tell you was thinking it, but you couldn't say it. <laughs> I'm, I meant everything. Though. Right, like, right. I could tell you. It was a, it was a nice conversation. You was happy to see me. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was like, Kari. <laughs> I was really confused about a lot. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, the entire night, I was questions. very confused. Yeah, you asked a lot of questions. Like you said, just going back to even... So, then we get off the phone. You go on IG, like we said, then we get you off. But then, like you said, you text me on some more questions. Like, hey, bro, I'm just checking. How long ago <laughs> was that? Because I swear to, to me, yeah. that was about an hour and a half after I had gotten off live that I hit you. Yeah, 25 minutes, man. Just 25 minutes. I was high from 8 p.m. or somewhere between 8 and 9 p.m. to about 4 in the morning. Oh, my God. But the thing about it, before I took shrooms, I was afraid of being that high for that long. But even though it feels like a long time once it's over, it's like, damn, that was quick. Mm. And you might have took too much, too. Like so, I definitely took too much. So, like, I don't know if that adds to it or not. I don't know how this should work. I was watching the Javante Davis fight every single time. The, like, if you know boxing, the canvas, will, like, if you hit the canvas hard enough, it'll bounce. Um, every time the canvas bounced, Javante or any other boxer, they turned into the elastic lady from The Incredibles. <laughs> every time the canvas bounced, them niggas stretched out. Um, That's what you said on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah every time the yeah, canvas yeah. bounced, them niggas would stretch out. Yeah, you did say that, bro. Man, shit got loopy. Like, That's hilarious. I had a hard time sleeping, Mm -hmm. but once the sleep came, you know, it came. I woke up just about an hour before I had to get over here to pot. I exhausted. Yeah, yeah. I am exhausted. It's not something you do every day. I told, like someone said they wanted to do it with me once I told them they were on. I said, you got to give me like four or five weeks at the minimum, more than that probably. Mm -hmm. But um, Rate it though. Rate, Rate your trip. 10 out of 10. Okay. Um. It was amazing. There were points in time that I, I sat down and I was like, yo, this is better than weed. Yeah, man. And people don't really understand. This is why um, I want to experience it because like, it's, it's real life benefits in that. You know what I mean? Like you can figure out things that you you know want to figure out about yourself. But even outside of that, there's health benefits. You know, like I, I swear to God, like there's like a, a protein powder that I've been looking up. It's like mushrooms. But I'm reading like people. Like Kratom and shit like that? Bro, it's like a powder. Like yeah. I, don't, I don't know how whatever they do, but... Uh, like comments, people say they add it to their coffee, their smoothies, and it it gives them health benefits. So there's actual like benefits in a trip. What I will say is, for you to probably, what you're saying is like going to the trip like intentionally. <laughs> yeah, that's, you're, you're gonna have to do it twice. Okay, but yeah, I definitely want to go at it that way. You're gonna have to do it twice. Okay, I went into this with intentions, but still, you your first time. Is going to blow your mind mm-hmm. to the point that you're not going to, you're, you're going to be overwhelmed. You're not going to be able to focus on what your intention is because to the point it's where so it's going to be too much. <laughs> your second time, you're going to be like, all right, I'm, I've am i been around the block with this. Right, right. Now I can stay focused. For sure. I I literally, I was like, yo, I'm going, there were points in time I had the podcast, like things in that like nature on my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was what my intention was going into this. No, sir. No, I sir. Ch- channeled way too many other things and yeah and you kind of walked into that blind like you know like you say sisters were just like hey let's do it it's right it's right now it's do or die it's do or die bro yeah and my si- channing was super ready like yeah, i didn't yeah. know she was that mentally ready for that mm-hmm. i told myself i was ready but at the same time i was a little afraid of course as you should but i can also tell like i'm not that fucked up of a person there was no point in my trip that was that was bad or negative. That's good. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that's really good. I'm really living. How was your weekend? I'm sorry I'm talking yeah, too no, much. No, I'm glad we got to get that because I, I was curious. I couldn't wait to hear that. But uh, your shroom trip needs to come soon, Carl. Like, you got to You got to hit that home. I got you, but I still, you know me. I just like to I like to take my time. No, yeah, I know. I know. Things, whatever. But uh, but my week, man. So like we said, Thursday was the last time uh, we seen each other linked up and shit. So um finished off the week was cool so friday night i didn't i didn't do nothing that's why i was like no nah, we didn't we didn't link up i was really just at the crib chilling finishing up editing um saturday man saturday was a great day it was super busy man so i'm starting off the day um hitting the gym i had to get my car inspected um i went to a birthday party you know what i'm saying went to the mavericks game like I was you did doing, go to the mavericks game how was that man fucking great bro did we win yeah man we won did i 10. ask you that on the phone uh maybe because I, I sent you a highlight right after we got off so maybe maybe okay um yeah i know you don't even remember that but uh, <laughs> I re- the thing is i remember all of it okay. i just can't remember what all we talked about on For the sure. phone i can remember everything though it's yeah, not yeah. one of those experiences okay but uh no nah, man the game was great look of course walking triple double man another he had like 34 you did 10. tell me he had a triple double yeah, yeah. 
34, 10 and 10, man. So the game was great, but the, the day was just great overall, man. So when I woke up, I got up super early. Like I said, I was finishing some editing. So I'm up um, five, six o'clock in the morning, just, you know, off, off the muscle. But uh, so when I went to get my car inspected, man, like I'm in there, right? And I pull up, you know, I let them know I, I got to show them my insurance. You know, if you obviously, you know, if you get your car inspected, you got to show me insurance. Whatever. Right. So then I go in and, um, you know, it's quick. It's just an inspection. And I'm I'm the first one in line. Nobody else there. So it's not taking a lot of time. But anyways, they pull my car up to the front. One guy, he comes in and say, you know, somebody about to come check you out. And I probably, I didn't even have a long wait. You know what I'm saying? But the guy come out and he like, no charge. I'm like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> I didn't even, I like, I wasn't paying attention. Because, look, I already had a coupon. I go to a, a specific place because, like, I get a good price. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I had a coupon. I was ready. So I, he called me off guard. He was like, no charge. I said, what? He said, no charge. You free to go? I'm like, I was like, damn, I appreciate you, bro. You know what I'm saying? So just, I was like, that was weird. So for the inspection, no charge? For the inspection, bro. No charge. You know what I'm saying? But I just knew, like I said, the reason why I brought it up, I just knew it was going to be a great day from that point on. I was like, that was my blessing for the day. Now I'm just going to have a great day. Like, I'm going to bless others today. You know what I'm saying? No one does that shit for me. Man, I've had a, um, a few times. Like, I've never, I will say, I've never been in line, like, at a, a food place and, you know, somebody, they paid say, it forward for pay, you. Pay. I want to do that, though. I oh, wanna, for somebody? Yeah, oh, bro. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to add that to my list. I've no, never done playing. that. But uh, I've never had that happen to me either. But, um, but like I said, that was, that was good, man. But I had a, a great, great weekend, man. Like, for real. Great weekend. I'm feeling good. I'm blessed, man. My people are good. Like, I can't complain about nothing. Like, I'm I'm grateful. Like, I always say, you know what I'm saying? So, I feel great. First week down in 2023, mental health check. Where you at? Yeah, man. Great question. So, I'm sitting I'm sitting high, bro. I'm at an eight. You know what I'm saying? Eight, nine. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I ever reached that 10 point like we always say, but I'm, I'm vibrating high. I feel great. Yeah, I think I'm at about an eight right now. Yeah, bro. I'm feeling great, man. I'm, I'm going more crazy in the gym, locking in. Like, like I said, I'm just, I'm disciplined, bro. You know, that's. I still got further up to go, but I'm taking care of business right now. Man, I'm super happy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's early. You know, we, we still, shit, we still got shit to take care of. But, uh, but yeah, man, I'm, I think I'm hitting it right on the nose. You know what I'm saying? Starting out, I, I feel the energy and I'm just hoping to keep it up. It's my birthday month too, like I said. Yes, you know? sir. So birthday coming up, I gotta, I gotta make sure my energy up is for that, man. I'm gonna be 26 and shit. I was gonna so. say you're literally gonna be past mid twenties. You're, you're gonna be late twenties. Be 26, nigga. We getting old, bro. You're gonna be in your late twenties. We getting old for real. For real, for real. It's gross. I know. Fuck out of here, man. Um, but I don't think I have anything else besides getting into the music did you have any more weekend stuff any nah, announcements nah. that you wanted to get to the people nah that was it man i'm still gonna keep uh keep notifying y'all roger taylor presents come home soon volume two coming out in february oh yeah absolutely uh but let's get to the music drops french montana mm-hmm. dj drama coke boy six this was anticipated he's been talking about this since sometime last year yeah it's finally dropped um he dropped two versions i think i think he dropped a regular version and what was this version that he uh, this one was called Money Heist Edition. I don't know what the difference was besides new songs at the end. I guess just, you know, deluxing it. But I, I think he deluxed it the day after it dropped. Mm, okay. So one came out Friday. I think the other came out Saturday. Got you. Okay. But French Montana DJ Drama is here. DJ Drama is not stopping. Oh, man. He's on fire, dude. I haven't seen him drop this many mixtapes in a really long time, though. Yeah, but you got to think, um, Gangsta Girls really, I, I don't want to say fell off. Well, that kind of got fell, indicted. Fell, yeah, yeah, but like it just lost its traction. And then like he hit a point you know, more recently where- He went to jail <clears> for it. <laughs> I know, bro. <laughs> but uh, he had a point more recently where he's getting you know more popular, more artists, or people want Gangsta Girls again. You know what I'm saying? And then fucking Tyler, bro, they won a Grammy- for a gangster grills tape, like, that's true. You know what I mean. So like now it's like okay, drama is is bad. He's that nigga. Everybody wants a gangster grills tape, so that's why. I'm just thinking back in my head, like he wasn't getting this type of respect when we were in high school. He was still dropping tapes. He just wasn't yeah. dropping them as frequently. Like I can remember the Stone Mountain tape, Charles mm-hmm. Gambino. Mm-hmm. Um, he might have done some dedications with Wayne while we were still in. Oh yeah, for sure he did. Yeah, high so school, when we was in high school and shit, yeah, for sure. It's just DJ drama is held to super high regard right now now he was in the mid to late 2000s like everybody knew who the fuck dj drama was back then but mm-hmm. that all like you said got washed away mm-hmm. it's back though oh yeah it's, it's back and it's probably the best it's ever been you know what i mean you it's, think so you think it's better than the original days as far as popularity i don't want to say quality in the music i don't want to have that argument but it's, i, I it's, was i would say quality in the music okay maybe that's but, what uh, i would have said first i, I would have probably said popularity he was 
It's probably hotter back then. He's more to a, a critical acclaim these days, but like hotter in the streets, I think back then. Okay. And you had to have a DJ drama mixtape to like be on like that back then. I mean, yeah, but it's different eras as well. But that's why I was saying I which, which yeah, made yeah. him smoke hotter okay, back then. For sure, for sure. But uh, but it's getting even though we're in a different era, you know, with the streams now. Like I said, more artists want it now. You because like back then, um, it was really just like the top guys in the game most of the time that had them. But now he's he works with anybody. It was time. one of those you aren't you yeah. aren't somebody unless you have a yeah, back you then. Right, right, right. But now it's like I've always wanted this my entire life. Let me work with yeah, this yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Which is cool, especially for these newer artists, you know, get to work with people that they looked up to or people that they may think are legends, wherever, however they may feel. Um, that's that's cool. That's cool. That's dope for sure. But let's actually get into the quality of the mixtape, Coke Boy 6. How many tracks do we hear? Probably like seven or eight? Yeah, I'll say that's a good number. I think I heard seven or eight amazing tracks. Yeah, man. I, I, shit, they, they sounded very nice. Um, good beats, good production, good good artists on the tracks, man. Um, Notable features. Stove yeah. God cooks it on the intro. Yeah, yeah, that one was crazy. Amazing. That Benny the Butcher feature, mm -hmm. amazing. That yep. Vory track. Yep, remix. Yeah, that amazing. Was crazy. That Nav. Holy shit. That Nav. <laughs> Who the fuck knew that Nav and, and French Montana would have been together on an album and it would have sounded that good? I know, man. I know. I would have never put them two together. They come from two completely different places, you know? Uh, but yeah, crazy song, man. I was very surprised by the way that sounded. Nav, of course, you know, we love the guy. We we told you all the time, like when we first found him in college and the shit. The brown boy. The brown boy. Uh, but you know, over the time he he's just he's he's lost some of his traction, like I said before, some of his popularity. Well, well that's kind of academics' fault. Regardless of who, you know what I'm saying? That's just it is what it is. But uh he's always been a guy that's super talented, man. Like regardless of whatever has happened, like Nav makes good music, but um, incredibly good, good music. Right. Right. But this track is just another example of that, man. Like that's so far, like we said, we haven't heard the entire, you know, project, but so far that's the favorite one for me. I haven't heard Nav spit to that type of level in a really long time. Yeah. Maybe once or twice on an album that came out in 2020 or 2019. But other than that, that was a 2017 thing. <laughs> that was a 2017 thing yeah he sounded great for for sure that was one of those um i don't take chance uh, i don't like taking chances i like fucking i was like i already know <laughs> yeah where did this come from now i need a nav album again yeah man i'm probably uh, i'm sure he's probably gonna drop i don't but, know if he dropped recently he dropped last year last year let's okay. remember that crazy colored album yeah I but that was so. a different type of vibe nav it wasn't that nav that we just heard like rapping super hard yeah, what that one? Demons crashed by angels. Yeah, is that what that was called? <laughs> Demons protected by angels. Are you still sorry. spinning that Nav album back? <laughs> this one? Yeah. No, I got some songs that uh, that say like "Play with Gun." I remember that, but no, I don't really play this back too much. Okay, no, I was just double checking. I wasn't making any jokes. I was seeing if this was actually something we were still playing. No, no, no. <clears throat> All right, we can move on to the next album that came out. Did you have anything else on Fritz Montana? No, just great music, like we said so far. Definitely uh, going to finish it just so I can know like how everything else sounds. But I'm very impressed by what I've heard so far. I have to finish that one. Yeah, like you said, great. I'm impressed so far. So far from what I heard, that's an A. Yeah, it sounded very nice. But I'll let that finish. Um, or we can before we skip into NBA uh -huh. Youngboy, uh -huh. French Montana was shooting a video in Florida, oh, shit, man. and they got shit. shot the fuck up. Yes. Ten people got shot. Yeah, so there, there's a song uh, on the album with um, Louisiana artist Rob49. It's called Igloo. Mm -hmm. That's the song that they were actually shooting the video for. Um, and, you know, allegedly some altercation happened with the people in the crowd that were surrounding, you know, in the background of the video or something, I guess. And shots rang off, man, and a lot of people got hit. This was crazy. Like The notable ones, like you said, was Rob49 <laughs> right. and... Um, French Montana's actual bodyguard, I believe, was in in a critical condition from being too. shot. Damn. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know. I don't really have too much to say about that. Just French sad. Montana made a statement. He said they were at the wrong place, wrong mm -hmm. time. I didn't see that, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, you lost your train of thought. No, I didn't lose my train of thought. Oh. I was, I was making a dramatic pause to him saying they were at the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh. Yeah, fucking right. Um. <laughs> My fault. But I don't know. <clears throat> I don't have too much to say on it. I hope Rob49 gets uh gets well. I hope everyone of the victims that were shot or everybody involved in that incident is well. The well being is straight. I don't think there were any deaths. I didn't hear about any deaths. Yeah, I don't think so. Not yet. And you know, you hope. This nigga said not yet. 
I mean, I'm saying I haven't heard anything like that yet. Oh, okay. That's what okay. I meant. I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. But uh, yeah, you, you just hope that things like that never happen. You never want to see people get hurt, especially as something just so simple as a, a music video shoot. You know what I mean? Like, those are just supposed to be in and out things you, you would think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just crazy, man. So just, just prayers up for everybody affected by that situation. Stay safe. Stay dangerous. Um, now we can go ahead and move on. NBA Youngboy, he dropped his project, I Rest My Case. Mm -hmm. You heard maybe a track or two from that? I haven't uh, heard any. About about three or four now at this point. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, had a busy weekend, didn't get to this. But Me too. Um, so far, I will say I, I don't really know how to gauge it because the, the four songs, three, four songs that I have heard are all completely different. Like he he raps different on them. He has some, some crazy lyrics that he's saying. He's singing some. So um, another one is like a, I don't know what to call the type of music that Yeet makes, I just call it like high energy. It's very high energy. I don't know what to call like that sound or that genre, but he has a song like that. I think it's called Black. Is that, that sounds a, just like that? Is that its own subgenre? I would think, but maybe it's not. I need to. Yeah, somebody needs to ask Yeet what type of rap music he makes, <laughs> and then we're gonna go with whatever he says. Right. That's that's now a new genre. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man, like I said, I, I'll check this out some more. Just ain't been able to, uh, to have some time to hear it, you know, fully. But uh, NBA Youngboy's here, man. He, he's back, and he's the first one to drop. How many songs was on this one? It wasn't that many, was it? Uh, I don't remember. All right, let me try to get that. What I will say is, or did you have it already? 19. Okay, yeah, what I will say is, I'm trying my best to not be a hater, Corey. I, at this point, am only listening to every song on the NBA Youngboy albums because I am on this podcast and I have mm. to deliver review. Mm. I've, I've tried so hard to hold it in. This is entirely too much music. Oh, shit. I've been saying that. Don't, the, don't feel bad. No, I, I know. <laughs> I've been I just, saying that for three years. Usually, like, I just try to hold the hate in until I can't. <laughs> this is in entirely too much music it's overload it's too much music for me to even call somebody like a favorite of mine mm. like it's it's just too much there's i've said this before um for him in particular and then just other artists man they're not giving us enough time to sit with the music like we did previously like i, I don't have enough time to sit and resonate and actually yes. feel the music because there's another project by you coming out and then it gets to the point he drops so much I'm not even going back to projects because I have forgotten about them. We thought that Drake dropped too much, dropping once every single year. There was a point in time we thought that was too much. If you guys think or if I think that is too much, seven to ten albums in a 12 year span is just not is, is too much. I don't have the time to listen to that many songs to go back to figure out which ones are the good ones. To I'm not storing. I don't have that many albums in my phone from anybody except for maybe Kanye West yeah. or Jay. Yeah, yeah. And one year to drop, like you said, that amount of music, dog. Uh, it's, it's tough on the fans, man. Like, for me, I'll say, I don't know about, because I know that we're not his general fan base. Like, we're not his target. His yeah. target, you know what his I mean? His target is like... It's, it's younger kids, I know. It's like... It's like it's, it's young, like thirteen to twenty yeah, or some shit yeah. like that. Younger, the younger generation, whatever generation you want to call it. But um, I know that's the target. You know what I'm saying? I know they may enjoy that because that may be all that they know. So at the same time, I think about that when I'm like, maybe that's what they what they are accustomed to. You know what I'm saying? We had our way, and maybe that's the way for them. But still, outside of that, it's too much music, bro. I can't even appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like I literally will forget about projects, and then it gets to the point. It's so much. When a new project does come out, I may not even listen to all of the songs because it's too much. And I'm agreeing with your say, uh, with what you're saying, but your theory, I don't even know if I can agree with that because let's stop and think about the biggest artists of the generation just under us. You have NBA Youngboy. You have Playboy Cardi. You have Lil Uzi Vert. Um, let's, let's see. Who else do we have in there? Yeet? Maybe. Yeah. <sighs> None of those artists drop frequently, except for him. Mm. We haven't gotten an album from um, Lil Uzi Vert since the pandemic, since before the pandemic actually started. Uh, Nine, Eternal Nine, Take. 19? Or 20. It was 20 just before the pandemic. Yeah, so, oh, Eternal okay. Take. Before yeah. Whole Lot of Red, we hadn't fucking heard from Playboy Cardi since 2018. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, let's let's think. Who else did I say? Yeet just dropped. I think his first album. Yeah, he he drops often. He doesn't drop as frequently as Young Boy, but he's one of those newer guys that drops a lot. Um, but no, I know what you mean. Like I said, um, Larry don't drop as much as as NBA Young Boy. Yeah, not no more, not at all. Uh, but yeah, man. But maybe that's just him. Then if it's not the the new aspect of the game, um, if everybody's not doing it, he does it. And I don't know why. Maybe because that's just what he's always done. But that's just what he does. The only other reason why I didn't want to say this because he likes to murder people that talk down on his music. Uh, okay. <laughs> he turned a new leaf, man. No, stop the violence. <laughs> stop You're, the violence. Stop the dog. violence. You are so right. Yeah, yeah. Stop the violence, man. Um, And he doesn't. That was alleged, guys. He doesn't murder. That's be a young boy, guys. He's, he's a rapper. He's yeah. an artist. We would never put that on anybody. Absolutely not. Um, but what we will put on NBA Young Boy, <laughs> we just found out over the weekend he just got married. Yeah, he said that he had full intentions and plans on getting married. Uh-huh. We were like, "That's NBA Young Boy." He just talking. He actually got married. Yeah, he did it, man. And shout out to him once again. So you know, on the last project right before the year ended, Ma got a family. Yes, I, I mentioned how on the cover art he had his now wife. On the cover art. Yeah, that's the I first said, one you said you've ever seen. I said he's never, ever done that, ever. In all those projects that we dropped about, he's never had another woman on his uh, album cover. You know what I'm saying? And I believe they had their baby in the picture as well. I can't remember. They did. They but, did. But like, so- a, our, a couple of babies, I think, in the picture. Okay. But I, I knew. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know he was going to get married, but just going back, like, he's turning a new leaf. This is a completely different NBA young boy. He's a different person now. And I'm looking in the picture. Let's see how many kids- yeah, there's two kids in this picture, but he's turned a completely new leaf. Like you said, we've seen some of his Instagram videos and mm-hmm. he said how much this woman that he just married has changed his state of mind. Um, she keeps him motivated, things of that nature. Um, if you've seen, this is the most out of the way you've ever seen him be a young boy. Yeah. This is the happiest. We just talked last part about how you actually sing his intro into this industry type game. Yeah. He's got his head on where it needs to be. I'm not saying it wasn't where it needed to be before, mm-hmm. but there were circumstances outside clouding um, his his top or clouding his road to the top yeah. in music. Yeah, yeah. I think those are out now. Yeah, I would I would say so as well. And that's just a good thing to see, man. We always want to see these guys uh, just be them best them best selves. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to see these niggas in the streets getting in trouble, shooting, killing. Like that shit is done, bro. You guys are talented. Y'all are taking care of y'all family, bro. You know what I mean? Like It's time to change this shit forever. Like, come on now. Because, like, when y'all go, then what? You know what I'm saying? Now all these people are suffering, bro. So I'm glad to see somebody like him, you know, because he, nigga, he was out there. He was doing a lot of dumb shit. So that if he could do it, shit, anybody could do you it. You sure like, the fuck right. Come on now. like I've heard him on, um, shout out what Amp is doing over there. He had a radio station on Amp, um, and he was talking to one of his fans about, now, he doesn't even like making pain songs anymore. He said he doesn't see himself making pain songs anymore. Okay. The same way we were talking last pod about how you weren't listening to SZA like that because that's not your your mood right now. That's not where you are in life. Mm-hmm. He was saying like, yo, that's not where I am in life anymore. If y'all want to listen to that, like that's I got shit. so many old songs <laughs> worth of that, but yeah, yeah. that's not where I am anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's fire yeah, hearing yeah. from NBA Young Boy. For sure. But I do love them pain songs. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, but that tape, once again, just going back to another topic earlier, the uh, the Ma Got a Family, that's Gangsta Girls. So once again, like we said, like these newer artists, these up and coming artists who's trying to get to the top, you know what I mean? Getting Gangsta Girls and shit. But um, NBA Youngboy, like I said, bro, just shout out to him once again for getting married. Like that's that shit makes me happy for him. That's that's big boy shit. Yeah. I'm not even ready for shit like that. <laughs> right, right, right. But that's lit, man, for real. You got to take your hat off to a nigga that's ready to get married. Right, for sure. And and for real about it. And be for real and really out there like showing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's that's dope, bro. Oof. Chill out. It ain't that bad. Bro, are you fucking crazy, <laughs> nigga? It <laughs> can't be that bad. Can't be, bro. See, now you're about to dip me into this conversation, <laughs> and I'm going to be the toxic one because Kari doesn't want to, uh, nah, come to on. say these things. on the. Nah, we can say it. What's up? That means you can't fuck any more, like, <sighs> girls the rest of your life. <laughs> See, look, he wasn't ready for that shit. He, he don't want to answer that one. Like, men, I know, I'm sorry, female audience. Yes, this is how males think, or at least me. Marriage means, like, you have one pussy for the rest of your life. Yeah, dog. <laughs> that's what it means attached to the same ass and the same titties like you know you want to fuck more 
Come on, man. Oh, look <laughs> at him. He don't want to go to the next level. <laughs> I don't want to go to the next level. <laughs> I'm ready to go there and beyond. Man, come on, cuz. I'm going to real? infinity and beyond. Infinity oh, and beyond. Oh, my gosh. This nigga's Buzz Lightyear. No, I'm Butts Lightyear, nigga. <laughs> I need multiple of those. What the fuck? Oh, my God. No, nah, I'm just playing. But, uh, and even in what I just said, that's even more of a shout out to NBA Young Boy. He locked it down to one vagina. He did it. He did it, man. Shout he put out. his jersey in the rafters? Oh, yeah. It's floating. It's retired. That's a big thing, putting your jersey in the rafters. Yeah, bro. It's lit. For real. Lit? <laughs> oh, he's really doing it for me. You want me to take this shit to the next level. I'm trying to trigger, bro. See, no, because he's trying to ruin me, too. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, bro. My fault. Shout out to the female listenership. Um, actually, shout out to the entire listenership. Apple, Spotify, uh, Google, Pandora. Am I missing anything? Amazon. Everywhere, man. I don't even know where, where we at. Sometimes I see shit. I'm like, oh. We're there? Like, Shout out to our provider, man. iHeart, TuneIn. Absolutely. Yeah, shout out Podbean. Bro, we love like, y'all. We everywhere. Uh, it's ab- crazy. Absolutely. Shout out to viewership. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Facebook be going crazy for us. Mm-hmm. I love y'all on Facebook. Yeah, um, be tapping in. Absolutely. I'm sorry, I just had to get that in there because I yeah, said something nah. about the female of viewership. Course. Of course. The do we have any more albums that came out? Or are we into albums that are on the way? Yeah, albums that are possibly on the way here soon. We don't know when they're coming out. One producer uh, that we were talking about that's been on a slew of shit was Gangsta Grills DJ Drama. Right. The next one that we've already heard about that we know he's been dropping albums all over the place. He dropped uh, some shit on the Games album. Did he have a Dom album come out? Uh, Nah, but he, he had songs produced on Dom's last album. We don't even have to get into Dom because we could talk about KD1, KD2, um, oh Magic, KD3. Oh, my God. Hit Boy. Yeah. You talked a little bit about how Hit Boy might explore other genres. He mm-hmm. might leave the hip-hop realm do this with some other people. Yeah, he's just um, because he works with everybody. You know what I mean? So that's why uh, everybody pulls up to Hit Boy Studio. If, if you follow, you know, his 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 uh, career, especially if you've just been following the last few years, but um, everybody pulls up to his studio when he gets, I mean, when he uh, when they get his beats, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of songs that we hear from Hit Boy are produced with him right there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Even like Nas, the KD shit. Oh, yeah, they, they were in the studio together, together. the yes. entire time. That's yes. what I mean. So I like, knew that part. Yeah, bro. So, But he works like that with everybody. So I say that because hella artists pull up from all different type of genres, not, right. not just rap. So, yeah, I always just you know thought he would cross that line. But um, he said that him and Music Soul Child have an upcoming project. Like I said, we don't know when, but he took to uh, Instagram, made that announcement, and uh, Music Soul Child confirmed it in the comments. <sighs> This is going to be amazing. This is going to be so great. Music Soul Child with Hit Boy. My thing is Music Soul Child doesn't fuck up anything. Oh, right. Never has. In the last three to four years, I'm not saying he's ever fucked up anything at all, but in the last three to four years, I haven't heard Hit Boy fuck up anything. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard Hit Boy channel that R&B realm, but I don't think it'll be difficult for him. I think he's going to be able to find the perfect beats for this. I think out of all of the seasoned R&B artists in the game, if you wanted to pick someone from the older class, Mm -hmm. Music Soul Child is so perfect. Or a a D'Angelo or Maxwell, Maxwell, something like that. Yeah, that would have been Eric Benet, shit like that. Oh, my God. That hit boy Eric Benet would go so stupid. Man, bro. I don't even think we ready for that. No, hit boy. Somebody tap in with like we need to tap in with hit boy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Bro. Go reach out to Eric Benet, nigga. For real. Um, but now nah, music soul child, like we said, bro. Oh, another one. This just came to my mind. Anthony Hamilton. <sighs> nigga, Fuck. you know how soulful Anthony that Hamilton shit would be? and hit boy. Bro, that shit just sounds like a Thanksgiving plate. No cap, nigga. Or I should have said a soul, Uncle Charlie, <laughs> a soul food plate, nigga. You get to the yams. It just <laughs> <laughs> for real, bro. It, I just picture yams, collard greens, cornbread. All type of shit. When you hear Anthony Hamilton song, that's what. Anytime like. I hear any of those artists, it just reminds me of November. <laughs> just D'Angelo, just Maxwell, none of them niggas even have holiday music. <laughs> them niggas just brown. <laughs> them niggas just brown. <laughs> them niggas just they Thanksgiving niggas. Nah, for real, stuffing ass niggas. Perfect time to play them niggas, bro. Oh, that was pause. Pause was word. Say, I don't know. I don't know. What Did you I call mean? them niggas stuffing? <laughs> Dog, let me just go on. Look, Lil Uzi got this tape coming out. Like. Look, 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 Lil Uzi. Um, Stuffing. <laughs> nah, but let's let's yeah. let's rewind. 
Do we have anything else about Music Soul Child Hit Boy besides we're super excited whenever this is to come out? I was going to say, nope, that's it, man. Just looking forward to that. God damn, bro. I've been, so just staying in R&B, like, both of us, I know for sure, bro, but even just all of the friends, bro, we've been heavy in our R&B bag lately. Hell bro. yeah, I've been heavy in my R&B bag. I've been getting deep in my shit, bro. So, like, of course, I'm, I'm looking forward to to this project whenever it does come out. Oh, mine? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, bro, I can't no, wait to hear shit. Um, February. What I and you have realized is there's a lot of music that would be under the alternative genre right. that would really correlate more with R&B. Mm-hmm. So what I've been doing lately is spending a lot of time going through alternative records, finding the ones that are really R&B-ish because shout out Pat, he put me onto that. Mm-hmm. These alternative R&B tracks are amazing yeah, they might be better than the r&b tracks nah, facts and and it's crazy um what what makes the difference is it the instruments the beat like what what separates it because like you said myself as well shout out to pat because he really be deep in that as well oh he you know like he bro, his, if this yeah, was the 70s crazy. 80s he would be uh, in the crates with the bro, shit yeah yeah his bag is crazy bro no lie he should he should have grew up in the 70s no pat, cap pat is a hippie bro that's what it is pat is a hippie. pat is a hipster yeah, yeah real bro, talk for real for real shout out pat um then I forgot where I was going with my shit. <laughs> Digging in the crates, the music. Um, damn, bro. I really forgot what I was saying. I'm still on the shrooms. <laughs> still on the shrooms. It's all good. Shout out, Pat, bro. You didn't fuck me up. Fuck. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. If you want to get back to it, we can get back into it if yeah. you remember. But uh, if not, we can go ahead and move on. Yeah. All right. I was talking about a little Uzi to kind of derail what we were talking about before with the stuffing. Uh, <laughs> But Lil Uzi said he's got a tape on the way too. For the last couple of years, he's been teasing that pink tape. Mm-hmm. This is uh from what I've been hearing from sources. The tape that's on the way. It's gonna be Lil Uzi Vert's pink tape. Yeah, finally gonna get it. You know, um, you remember when he put the pink diamond in his forehead? That was yeah. that was what all of that was about. That was crazy because it fell out. You lost it, right? It wasn't real. Oh, that's that's what you think. Do you think a nigga's <laughs> gonna let something worth sixteen million dollars just fall out? And he says, "Fuck it." Maybe. Maybe these guys, bro, these rappers these days, they got so much bread, bro. I don't know. I don't know. Nah, bro. I don't know. That's a lot of fucking money to just have, uh, first off, in your damn forehead. Because why? Um, And then second off, nah, yeah, I I don't think. I think you're keeping up with a pink diamond that's worth $16 I think that was two years ago. And today, I'm not pocket watching, Mm -hmm. but it would have. It would have been a sorely terrible investment. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I'm, I'm going to say that was not a real $16 million diamond. Gotcha. Okay. That would have reduced. Yeah, quick. As soon as you know, That would have been like a, like a new car. As soon as you pull that bitch off the lot, the value has already went down. No, no. What I'm saying is it's on the type of shit where, like, you wouldn't be able to pay your bills after you bought it. <laughs> oh, okay. He did not buy that. For sure. Okay. That, <laughs> I was like, okay. I'm, I'm right. just trying to say <laughs> shit without saying shit. Like, <laughs> my fault, cuz. It's my fault, my fault. But nah. 16 million. Yeah, in his forehead. I know. It's, it's sick. It's crazy. And then it falls out and he said, fuck it. He said, fuck it, bro. I got so much bread on me. Shit was so m- rhinestone <laughs> <laughs> But nah, bro. Uh, so, you know, like we said, just going back to pink. Like we said, this is rumored to be the, the pink tape uh, that's supposed to come out. But. Like, I wanted to get to. He has been still dropping music. He had that EP come out. The EP, yeah, it was actually called Red and White. There were some good songs on there, but you know, he got that one song that I want to rock that's going crazy right now, all over social media. That song is fucking like number one on social. That media. song is a bona fide hit oh, on yeah. social media. Yeah, bro. My sister's twenty seven now. Granted, we were on the shrooms, but <laughs> she was in there doing that dance last night. Oh shit! She did it for like four minutes. Yeah, it'll, it'll do it to you, man. I just want to rock. No, but yeah, yeah, dog. <laughs> That song is a great song. First off, the energy, I don't know, it it takes control of you. Like, for real, in the gym, it goes crazy, dog. I okay. promise you. See, yeah, gym. I haven't experienced that in the gym. So, but I'm just saying, like, even, you know, your your sister, that's why she felt it. Social media is why they, like, that's a great song. I'm not okay. even going to lie. Uh, but, like we said, it's a little Uzi, bro. He knows how to make good music. I'm not surprised. But whenever that tape comes out, you know, we'll be looking forward to listening to that. Yeah, because Lil Uzi is the type of person that I know he's going to have a considerable amount of really good songs on the album. I don't expect him to drop bad albums. Now, that EP wasn't it was cool. all that to me, but it was Your just songs. an EP. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's um, Love is Rage 2 or Eternal Take, both of those are 
amazing to me. Yeah. I don't have Love is Rage 2 in my phone, though. I, I forget why. I think it had some sort of... Never mind. <clears throat> are, we in the, are we in the tracks? Yeah. <laughs> Quavo dropped a, a tribute to Takeoff. Yeah. Quavo finally... Um, this is his first time, you know, since the funeral of Takeoff. Um, coming back to social media, posting things. So this actually happened, you know, as soon as we finished recording the last episode, uh, we got wind of this... And, uh, you know, we played it and, you know, he makes it his tribute to Quavo, man. It's just, it's, that situation is still just so sad, man. It's just like, God. But the lyrics, you know, you resonate. He's talking about his nephew. He's talking about, you know, I'm going to see you in heaven one day, things like that. Um, just just a sad song, man. I'm not going to let Kari do that. Kari, you didn't like that song. I don't. I don't like it. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> no, I don't like it. I was Look Kari over there pandering like Joe Biden at Roscoe's I, in I South, uh, Southern California. That. I was going to get to that. And I'll tell you why I don't like it. I just wanted to get to the lyrics first. Like, I'm not gonna just diss a tribute, um, but no, I don't. I don't like it just because um, I feel like he should have just came with more like energy. I just didn't like. To me, <clears throat> I know it's a tribute song, so we're gonna like it. But it, it's a slow kind of like boring song. It that, was it was missing a lot of lyrical content. Like if if it was gonna be a tribute song, like I know we're not the ones to say what he should put in his tribute to I his. Know. All right, of course, nephew. Of course, not. but um. Yeah, we wish we would have got a lot more lyrical content in that, and just more. more we wanted it to cut deeper. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, like we said, it's not—it's not up to us to say what he should have did, should should not have done um, for that song. But yeah, I don't—I don't like. I'm not gonna play it again. Kari's response as soon as he heard <clears throat> the song was "Offsets is gonna be way harder." <laughs> Damn, why is you telling? <laughs> <laughs> See, look, he, he thought no, he was going to get, he he get away. I like, forgot. No, like, I'm not letting Kari off on this nah, shit, man. I forgot I said that. I put them on everything. But yeah, I did say that just because I know uh, he's going to he's gonna rap like a monster on his tribute, bro. Like, I just feel that. Um, but I did say that, man, because, Off- I mean, yeah, Offset's going to have a, a better tribute track. Do you think so? I know so. Do you think he's going to have a tribute track? Yeah, man, you got to. I, um, of course, you know, we probably know he's working on the album. Um, he's definitely working on the album. We heard that it was postponed. It was. It was supposed to come out, I think, it the was. week right. of right. Takeoff's right. death. Yeah, you're right. But um, They keep doing that, the fucking offset. I'm not saying that that had anything to do with last time or that this wasn't warranted pushing the album back. Mm-hmm. Offset always has to push his album back into the next year. It yeah. was supposed to drop end of one year. He always has to push it into the first quarter of the next year, which you don't want to have to drop first quarter as a, a seasoned artist like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the the previous the 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 debut uh, five, five or four. four. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, got pushed back for you know whatever reason. The that, car crash, that, all that shit happened with Cardi B. Sheesh, yeah, it was a lot going on. Just unfortunate situations, man. But um, I did say that, man, just because um, you know I just like I like him more as an artist right now as well. Offset, you know. What I mean? Absolutely. So, well, I've so always liked Offset as the artist. Uh, it was a it was a point where Quavo was early college. The SoundCloud, yes. Quavo, yes. Quavo was my guy. He was my guy. But then once after Bad and Bougie, you start really figuring out who's who. Once they became real right, artists, right. once they passed exactly. rapper exactly. and went into artist, we could tell that mm-hmm. Offset was the one. Yeah, yeah. Then, it, you know, you started having different favorites there. But, um, but yeah, man. Like we said, the song was, I just didn't like it. But, of course, it's a tribute. Um, so, it, it's, it's great, you know. Um, it's Quavo, you, you just wish the best for him still in this situation, you know, being there, unfortunately, of course, his family, um, not to say he we should have more sympathy for or empathy for Quavo than we do for Offset. No, not saying that, but like he was there, you know what I'm saying? It's probably hitting him crazy. You know, they were super close. These guys grew up together. So uh, just prayers for Quavo, man, still going through that situation. I, I know it's just a horrible feeling there. Speaking of takeoff, um, there are rumblings around the industry that he has an album coming out posthumously. Yeah did hear that as well i don't i don't know where these rumors are coming from though yeah um because before the passing um they literally had just dropped the the unkin few tape so like literally like two, a month or two you know what i mean so there was no wind of them or him about to drop an album because they're on the fucking promo run and they were about the to album. go on tour for the album so there wasn't exactly. about to be a recording of an album exactly you see my point which <laughs> is leading me the wrong way okay which is already letting me know what y'all about to get to doing they're gonna force it unfinished songs don't fucking force it man yeah, there's no need to no need and to. he passed away in november i don't need to hear about the plans for the album in january mm. 
Yeah. Two months? Yeah. They haven't even solved his murder. Yeah, unfortunately. They haven't even figured out who got him. Yep, I know. But I'll always be down to hear take off music, um, whether it drops this month, next month. It sounds like if they're already promoing that he's got an album finished, this will come out in 2023. We'll see. Like you said, it's, it's alleged. But I, I feel you. I feel you. Like, let, let some time go by. Dog. Like, fuck. <laughs> I feel that for sure. Because uh, that's what they did with Dolph. We just got Dolph's first. You yeah, I mean? I mean, some time went by. He he passed away in what, November twenty twenty one. Yeah, but that's what I mean. They let time go by. Yeah, that's, that's the point I'm I'm getting to. Like like you said, it's only been two months. I don't want I don't and, want that album this year unless the album was set to drop next. If if it was some I mean, life yeah. after death Biggie shit, yeah, yeah, right. where he'd already been rolling the album out, touring <clears> this <throat> shit around, promoing it, mm-hmm. and he just happened to die with the the release date already out. Mm-hmm. That's a little different. Right. Like we said, that wasn't the case. Maybe maybe there is a finished project, <clears throat> but he wasn't promoing that. I, I want to hear that that that, uh, that rumor was, was false. That's what I would like to hear. Yeah, same. Sorry. I, I would love to hear Takeoff music, but I want to hear that rumor is not true. We don't need that right now. <clears throat> Do we want to get into Takeoff's alleged... Murderer type shit. Yeah, yeah. So you know, like you just mentioned, uh, the the murder is still unsolved, really at this point. Very much unsolved. Yeah, yeah. Um, DJ Pat, the suspect that they did have in custody mm-hmm. on the murder charge for allegedly shooting takeoff, he's posted a million dollars bond. He's out. Yeah, this was uh, this was very odd because um, you know before he got arrested, of course he did try to go on the run allegedly. You know what I mean? But he didn't have nowhere near one million. That was um, one reason why he said he was trying to get away, things like that. Um, but one million is a steep tag. So, yeah, when I saw it was that, really two million. I think they posted one million okay, to get out. OK, got you. Uh, but no. Yeah, this was um, you, you said it yourself when you sent it. You said it, this was a mystery because that's that's what the headline said. They said a mystery person bonded him out. Right? They said, yeah, a mystery, a mystery individual concerned about his well-being. Mm. Something of that nature. Wow. Um, you don't hear that too often. You don't. But. It's all just gathering information and the public is leading up to believing that J Prince bonded DJ Pat out of jail. <laughs> hey man. It sounds reasonable. Yeah, yeah. It it could be. But the thing is, and I don't I won't get into the he said, she said. Right, right. The word we are from Texas. The takeoff murder happened in Texas. Word on the street was DJ Pat was not the one that did that to take off. He was he let some bullets fly after takeoff was shot and he was picked up because they don't have anybody else that shot. They just have him because they knew he fired a gun that night. Gotcha. Not saying he's not the shooter. I'm not saying he is the shooter. I'm saying that's word around Texas. Right, right, right. So I I have a lot of Texas homeboys that we're happy to see him out of jail because under their assumption, they know for sure that is not that is not the shooter of takeoff. Okay. Okay. A lot of people were on the assumption like wrong guy type shit. I've heard I've heard that a lot. Like I've seen that a lot in comment sections. Y'all got the wrong guy. That's not the one that did it. Yada yada yada. And I can't speak to that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like uh I was gonna say, you know, we'll just have to see what happens with the trial now. You but, know what I mean? Right. What I was leading up to is if he's not I'm glad he was able to at least get the bail. Yeah, I was going to get to that as well. So, yeah, um, of course, like I said, at, at first, you never see this, especially when it's that high. Um, but, you know, if he is innocent because you are innocent, so you proven proven guilty. Correct. You know what I mean? So um, it's good to see him out. You know what I'm saying? And then who knows what happened, whatever. They'll figure that out. We'll let the court uh, decide on that. But, yeah, I know what you mean, especially because even before, like I said, when he went allegedly on a run he mentioned that he was concerned for his life yes you know so like that's that part is real you know what i mean so the whoever bonded things like that for that particular reason i don't care but like no that's real he probably is struggling mentally who knows you know what i mean but whatever there when he tried to run away <laughs> yeah i'm just kidding <laughs> um i was going to mexico Start, we're rolling we're rolling into different topics just so smoothly <laughs> if you had anything else to say about this situation nah. Or else I can just transition. Yeah, we're in yeah. Mexico. Yeah, we're in Mexico. Um, El Chapo, because we were on running away too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because El Chapo definitely escaped twice before he was apprehended in 2020. Yep, yep. El Chapo Guzman, his son, mm-hmm. has been arrested in Mexico 
Um, I, I don't know what charges. I believe there's some sort of drug charges as well. Yeah. But he's been arrested in Mexico and Mexico tearing that motherfucker up right now. Oh my goodness, man. This is uh this is scary to see. You know, things like this on the internet. Of course, you know things like this go on, but to see it like this is real life. Um so there was a video The cartel don't play about, oh, yeah, about play. the chapos. Yeah, yeah, they don't play at all. Um but yeah, man, so there was a video that I sent first, right? Right. Um and this was just news got out that the son was arrested. The team got wind of that, and the team said, saddle up. And somebody is recording. They're on the freeway, you know what I'm saying, somewhere in Mexico, but they're just recording cars just flying. I'm talking, it's 10, 12, 15 cars just going I was gonna 100 say, miles plus an hour down this road. You sent me that video. Those cars were going as fast oh, as fucking possible. Bro, them cars was driving so fast nigga they, they about to drive into whatever building they go into like they don't give a fuck nigga those are suicide stopping. missions yeah bro they not stopping dog so um i said that first you know what i mean and then like not too long after that um i get another video but in between that you mentioned you was like okay seeing that first video already knew some shit was about to go down you know how you know how the cartel steps <laughs> right, about right, right. the chapos you, you knew some shit was about to jump off bro like i said it was hella cars who knows how many people were in those cars yes but you knew shit was about to jump off right so then i get the second video and this car's on fire it's the city is is lit lit up man it looked like you know riots bro like people going crazy it's just cars on fire turned over like it looks like chaos out there man i'm gonna read something it says all right Per Reuters, that's a new source. Mexican security forces captured the alleged drug trafficker on Thursday and the city of Calicom was engulfed in violence between authorities and suspected gang members. During the dramatic arrest of Guzman, who's El Chapo Jr., who's said to be the high ranking member of the cartel um, that his father can blah, 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 blah. They said 19 alleged members of the cartel were killed and 10 military personnel were killed during the capture of El Chapo Jr. Yep, and then they said additional 21 were arrested. So they're not playing out there, man, but... The, the fuck they aren't. <laughs> they, no, bro, they, man, this shit's crazy. All right, no, what I would say is the cartel ain't playing. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Like, what the fuck? I was having a conversation with my mother about this, and I was like, not knocking anything going on in Mexico. Mm -hmm. That's a weak army. Mm. Imagine if some car... Like, it doesn't matter whose cartel was what was driving towards the US army to try to sh the national guard will clear that shit out. Oh yeah, they wouldn't they wouldn't get too far. Peanuts to an elephant. They wouldn't get too far unless they was going to to the capital. <laughs> my, my mom said that shit too. She was like, I mean, unless they headed to the capital, then they're just going to get in. The capital, then they just let them right in, man. The door's unlocked. The back door is unlocked. But if they're taking this as serious as the US would take it, mm -hmm. they would blick every member of the yeah, cartel yeah. that showed up. Yeah, they wouldn't get too far. Like they I'm wouldn't saying. even try. Yeah, bro. Um, but, you know, Mexico's different. They, you know, allegedly, they run the government. They have a lot of ties with them. Hell yeah. Uh, well, of course, we, we knew for sure back when El Chapo Sr. was out and in Mexico. Mm -hmm. He had complete control over the government. Right, exactly. So, Which is why he was able to break out every time he was in Mexican jail. Yeah, man, it's crazy. But um, one thing I want to say, like, um, damn, bro, you just got to think something like this is just going to cause fucking chaos, bro. Like, why, like, don't get me wrong. I know you have to capture people, but I'm just like, dog. Leave some of it the fuck alone. Y'all knew lives were going to be lost here. Like, I think that, right? But I don't know how, you know, shit works. I don't know. But no, yeah, you have to know in an instance like this, like, like, come on, people are going to die. Yes. People died arresting El Chapo Sr. Yeah, if I'm man. not mistaken, they yeah. tore the fucking city to pieces. Oh, uh, yeah. And it was Kali Khan again. It's crazy. There are certain places they like, yo, don't don't fucking be over there. Kali Khan, mm -hmm. Tijuana, they be like, hey, keep your ass up out of there. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I've seen um, I've seen videos on the internet of people, you know, driving right and taking the wrong turn, getting too far down the road that you shouldn't be down, and getting pulled up on by the cartel. Like, who the fuck are y'all? Literally. So it's like that, dog. Like, you got to be careful out there. You real life, you you could take the wrong turn, bro, and it'd be the end of your life. Or that's you just can scary. Stay here. <laughs> or you could just not go. Or you can go to Cozumel. <laughs> or, Puerto Vallarta. Or Cancun. Puerto Vallarta. Or Cabo. Yeah. To you take your ass somewhere else, yeah, my nigga. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of one more safe city. Where where, where we at? Where we at? Did we say them all? Mexico City, goddamn. Damn it. Damn it. He's Mexico saying, city is he's safe. saying them all. Yeah. Where, where are the other ones? <laughs> That's all I got for him, man. Safe Town, Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> safe house mexico i made that shit up right, right, right. that sounds like a call of duty map right right safe town mexico <laughs> new town <clears throat> no cap it's new town for sure this motherfucker right now um but yeah just crazy bro what you about to say no i wasn't about to say anything i was waiting on you oh yeah but no nah, man uh, like we said it's just it's chaos out there um that's going back to like i said i don't know still why you would do this but i understand you know government there's an obligation i guess to take out the bad guy um so i'm not shaming that but bro 20 what was it 29 people we said yeah there were 19 like, um 19 of the cartel got killed so right. it sounds like the majority of the uh mexican authorities did their their job um and there were 10 um personnel. police personnel yeah, yeah. or military personnel that were killed yeah well another thing that my mom was saying she was like you have to think about this we have so many actual city and county policemen mm -hmm. that then go to like a SWAT team, that then go to this, that then go to that. Mm -hmm. It would take a lot for our military to even have to step in. There'd be other niggas mm -hmm. that would take care of this shit first. Look at mom potting. I'm like, damn, mom. <laughs> you're right. SWAT clear these niggas nah, out. Facts. Like, like I said, bro, you're not getting too far. But no, nah, that makes sense. Like a lot of shit don't even make it out your city. You'd be lucky to even get out your city, bro. You may get to like a neighboring city, like out here. Absolutely, niggas might get from from Fort Worth to Richardson. <laughs> but like, niggas, if you make it that far, you're doing like, fucking amazing. You know what I'm saying? You might get from Fort Worth to Haltom, nigga. <laughs> right? Like that? No, in Fort Worth, they on your ass. Yeah, like yeah. you're not getting out. Yeah, bro. So like, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. I, I mean, I, I agree with moms though on that statement. Um, you're not getting too far, man. You can't do shit like that here. And if people, like, if actual military personnel has to step in, at this point, you're just going to die. Oh, yeah. Like, they're, they're not playing around. It, with the cops, you fuck around yeah. might still die. But if they have to step in, you're dying. Yeah, bro. You're dying, buddy. You know that. I'm the captain now. <laughs> it's that type of shit. Like, aim. <laughs> fire. They dropped them three fucking bodies so quick. Dog, you talking about Captain Phillips? And Captain Phillips. Man, what a movie. Uh, but nah, bro, they, they got them niggas out of there. It was so crazy because they was in, uh, what was it, like a little submarine? Is that? It was in like, they were in a, a rescue submarine boat rescue at that submarine, point. Right, yeah, and, and sniped all of them at the same time, bro. You got to be. Drop those bodies that quick. You know how accurate you got to be in a situation like that? And what I was thinking, and I was like, even the one that they caught that lived, mm -hmm. they were all some of the dumbest people ever yeah but what i had to understand was the dumbest motherfucker of them all was captain phillips because i read that note at the end that said two years later he went back out to sea i said ain't <laughs> oh shit i said ain't this a bitch nah yeah niggas don't bro you got a movie like you should never work another day in learn your, life. your fucking lesson like, buddy come on now. he went back out to sea two years later because he loved it and it was his calling like, bro, oh, okay Okay, Tom Brady, why, bro, why niggas don't want to be home with their families? Maybe maybe what you said earlier about marriages is true. That's what I was calling it. Every nigga... If, I'm doing this to stir you. Every nigga you know hates their wife. <laughs> Chill out, bro. Wives, I'm, your husband hates you. I'm just trying to get you started, bro. Like, yeah. Maybe it's true, though, man. None of these niggas want to go home. Uh, like, damn. The other thing that y'all got mad at me one night, we had a crazy night in Austin, Texas. Yep. Uh, with an Uber driver because I was a little too drunk talking yep. shit to the Uber driver. Yeah, yeah. Married men don't fuck their wives. <sighs> Why? Have though? we not heard? Yeah, I know you heard the no, married men yeah. don't have sex thing. I have, but like I always be like, damn, what's up? I don't know, but I don't want to find out. <laughs> chill out. I'm chill out. Chill out. He's got me back on his marriage tip. It's fucking I terrible. I just want to get you started, man. If you think about it, it's actually a like. It's one of the strangest constructs ever. Like, I want y'all to go home and think about, like, what makes you happy in life uh -huh. and how bounding that shit is. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some truth to that, for sure, man. Everybody's just, opinion, like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of truth in everybody's opinion when it comes to marriage because you can look at it from so many different ways. You can look at it, you know, as a contract, like you said. You can look at it from the binding aspect. You can look at it, oh, we didn't have kids, so, like, this is just, we just gonna do this because of that, like... You know, we didn't seen it all, so I I know why you say that. I'm not like disagreeing with you at all, in any way. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. To get I'm you not a, I, one day I'll be married, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Of course. I, I probably probably won't fuck her anymore. <laughs> Chill out, bro. <laughs> yes, you will. It's gay to fuck your wife. <laughs> not <laughs> gay to fuck your wife. <laughs> nah, man. You will, dog. Um, maybe so. I'm gonna wish that on you, man. I, I hope that for you. I really do. <laughs> Next bus to bikini bottom. The fuck? Don't wish that shit on me, nigga. 
<laughs> wish that shit on oh, yourself, buddy. Oh, that's funny. This nigga wish marriage on me. Nah, I, I said I wish you have sex with your wife. Oh, okay. That's what I was saying. Yeah, less than like once a year, like most husbands. Chill out, man. I've been fucking my wife in a year. It can't be that bad. But I have heard that. And like I said, it could be for whatever reason. They'd be like, damn, why he cheat? Never mind. Go on. Let's, let's move. Let's move on. 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 <laughs> the Wells Vargo. Uh, I said Vargo. <laughs> All I'm thinking about is vagina. <laughs> The Wells Fargo. Uh so an Indian an Indian sub chapter sub um what is it called? Another uh, another branch, a sub branch yeah, in yeah, India yeah, yeah. of Wells Fargo, their vice president was fired because he was caught urinating on a passenger <laughs> during an Air India flight. Weird. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna state it again. Yeah, yeah. Say it one more time. <clears throat> a Wells Fargo Vice president in mm-hmm. India has been fired for urinating on a passenger during an Air India flight. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to read a little bit. Um, it says his name. He has a weird name. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but it says who at the time served as vice president of the Indian subsidiary of Wells Fargo faces charges, including sexual harassment, obscenity and insulting the modesty of a woman uh, reported. He will sit in custody for 14 days as police further investigate the matter. He has applied for bail with a hearing set for January 11th. That's that shit. Like once it goes on, like shit that goes on in Asia. Like if you remember when Leangelo Ball stole uh, those mm, Louis V, yep, whatever. Yep, yep. When you get arrested, they don't handle you right there. Mm-hmm. They hold you during the investigation period. Yeah, that's crazy. Man. You might get released after the investigation. Yeah, 14 days just sitting there. That's got to be. Just while they investigate. That shit got to be hell. But uh, a little bit more about the situation. So it occurred on November 26th on board an Air India flight from JFK. Um, And then it says an unidentified business class passenger later identified by German outlet, whatever, said that the vice president drunkenly stood up and urinated on a 72 year old woman. So he was wasted. He was wasted. He got up and. And just, just pissed. pissed. <laughs> the thing is, just pissed. I've heard of people doing shit like that before. Never on seen a, it on a plane. Not on a plane, but I've heard Dog. of people that are so oh, yeah, yeah. drunk they don't care about making it to a bathroom. They oh, just yeah, yeah. stand up, pull dick out, pee. Yeah, yeah. Or they just piss on themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, I've seen that. Um, and you see that shit on the street too. But um, some people are so drunk. They think they're near the restroom mm-hmm. and they go through the motion of unbuckle pants, Jeez. unzip, that's crazy. and actually think they're in front of a toilet that's just crazy. piss. Because I'm, I've never, I've never, had I've never that. done anything like that before. But just recently, I've spoken to somebody that has family members really? that that do that. I've walked into a house and they were like, no, 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 no. They, somebody just peed there. Yeah, this this is a crazy situation. So um, I just want to get a little bit more about this story because the story doesn't yeah. it doesn't end. Here. Oh no, it's not even close to. Yeah, over. this is a crazy story. So the woman who is remaining unidentified says that she immediately notified the flight crew about what have happened, what had happened, and appealed for a seat change. They told her that they had no other available seats, and which, they which refused. Kind of true. They refused to allow her to sit in first class, which had some open seats. That means you have open seats. Mm-hmm. I was just getting at, and they said they had no open seats. But yeah. if there are open first class seats, they acted like somebody else in first class was going to be able to take them from 30,000 feet in the air. I was just like, like is someone you, else coming? If you have seats, why can't the lady get moved to a different seat? What, what I will say now, think about it like this, Kari. Uh-huh. You bought... And Air India or headed to whatever place. JFK. From JFK, from to, JFK India. to India. Right. Do you know how much a first class ticket is for that? It's probably a about a five thousand dollar ticket first grip. class. Yeah, yeah. For and sure, you paid sure. that money to relax in first class and all of a sudden they sit a woman that smells like piss next to you for the for the the next nine hours. Nah, yeah, I I understand that. That I don't want to be insensitive because coming into this, I was completely like, "Yo, what the fuck?" There's yeah. open seats and won't give it to her. Yeah. But now that I'm thinking, if I paid five thousand yeah. dollars for a first class seat, you're not gonna sit this woman that smells like piss right next to me. Facts, no, no, no. And then that's this, a coach problem. This is just for <laughs> this is a coach problem, and this is just for a conversation. So of course, um, I understand why, why you mentioned that, and yeah. If uh, because if somebody's paying that much, they probably some uppity people. They probably don't want to be fucked with. And then yeah, if you put somebody in here and it smells like piss, I may have something to say. Oh, the may, <laughs> nigga, I paid five thousand. You better move that bitch back. <laughs> move that bitch back. I like guess a couch. This, you better. F- 
Y'all better find somewhere else to put her. Where find, else would, bro, where else would she go? Find somebody else that doesn't smell like piss. Mm-hmm. Move them into first class. Oh, and okay. then take her and you. move her into another coach seat. Let's play musical chairs <laughs> yeah, on this I was bitch. Say, musical chairs. Look at you. Because don't sit the pissy bitch in first class. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to call her the pissy bitch. <laughs> they, oh, damn. They, uh, they insulted her modesty. Why you have to call her that, though? Like, that's a woman. She not a... Is she not a bitch with piss on her? A bitch with piss on her is a pissy bitch. Look at him trying to make me a bad person on the pod because of all the bro, female listenership we bro, have. No, nah, bro. You doing that yourself, man. Pissy lady? No, nah, chill out. Chill out. Piss lady? Lady piss? <laughs> lady piss. All right, man. But the story's not over. Like I said, the story gets crazier, man. So... Um, like we said, the crew instead let the woman sit on a crew seat for two hours while they tried to clean the seat, which the woman said was still damp and reeking of urine. She refused to sit in the seat and insisted that police arrest the drunken passenger. Which is, you know, that's reasonable. Okay. Now, n- refusing to sit down. Mm-hmm. Bitch, you don't see this turbulence. And this is my thing. The seatbelt side is on. This is my thing. I don't know if you checked your bags. Bitch, if you don't go in that overhead, <laughs> change your clothes in the bathroom, and come back out with clothes without piss on them, we we have every op- solutions. Yeah, we have every opportunity. Yeah, All your clothes yeah, yeah. are somewhere here right now. Oh yeah, right. They on the plane probably. If you like, I said, if Maybe. you didn't check your bags and they're in the belly of the plane, yeah, that, right. that that makes of sense. Right, right. But if you didn't check your them yeah. and they're in the overhead or in your carry on, right. put something else on. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You don't have to sit and piss. There are solutions. There are solutions. And I know this sounds crazy, like nah, like I might be funny. coming down on her, nah, but he she's the one that got pissed on. I'm not coming down on her. I'm uh-huh. just let's make this situation easier. Yeah, let's find solutions, bro. And and you have so far. It's still not over though. So yeah, yeah keep going. It's still not over. So uh, the vice president sobered up and insisted that he speak with the woman, despite her insistence that she not she not see or speak with him. Yeah, okay. she didn't want to see or speak with him right, after right. he was insisting. I think. So it says that he started crying and profusely apologizing to the woman and begged her not to lodge a complaint because I'm a vice president. You're gonna ruin my life. That's what he's thinking. And no, nigga, this is another thing of me just being a principal. Take some accountability. Mm-hmm. I'm not ruining your life. Mm-hmm. You ruined your life yeah, the moment yeah, yeah, you yeah. pulled that dick out. Right, right. I'm just saying that's what he was thinking. That's why he's trying to plead his case. Yeah, think about yourself, though. Yeah, yeah. But no, you're correct. Um, it says the woman said that she found it difficult to insist on pressing charges in the face of his pleading and begging in front of me in my own shock and trauma. Bitch, I smell like urine. <laughs> <laughs> sue that nigga. Like, you smell like urine. Yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. it's hard to sue him. All right, but like we said, this story still continues, man. It's crazy that it's, it's still crazy. going like, on. Like, what the fuck? So the woman initially accepted reimbursement for her shoes and clothes, but she later returned it, telling the vice president she did not want his money, and she pursued charges and filed an official complaint. She's well within her right to do that, too. As she said the first time, but like this story is just crazy as shit to me because obviously starting from the point like this nigga pissed on an innocent woman. A old woman at that so that's just crazy starting off but then her you know not pressing charges then press it's like bro all right y'all make up your mind this shit i hate just fishy shit like that you know what i'm saying because he already tried it at first but then maybe um she went to go talk to a lawyer or thing you know like and that's fine like do what you do i just hate how shit changes like maybe that. she felt as though this is another thing because i i know that something inside of the article said that he had never been charged or there was very very late Mm -hmm. that he was actually charged by the airport maybe oh yeah you're right maybe she was under the assumption that the airport was going to file charges on him so maybe i don't have to press charges Uh, because they're going to make sure he goes to jail for this you're correct so it happened on november 26 the airport then filed their police report till december 28th over a month see she probably thought that the airport was going to do something to put him in jail and then i found out that you guys didn't no nah, nigga you're yeah, going yeah. to jail that's bullshit man and then so wells fargo they said upon them learning of the involvement fired him and called the incident deeply disturbing um then he went on a run bro this shit is crazy this story <laughs> that, oh my goodness he did go on a run i he forgot went about on that on a run eluding police since early december he had gone so far as to turn off his mobile phone to avoid tracking but he made a credit card transaction in bangalore but like, bro, this story is just this is wild. And this, is, this wild. is my thing. What did he go on the, to run from the piss charges? <laughs> from the, like, bro, it wouldn't been like you're gonna lose your job, of course. But like, well, 
we're thinking about in America. Oh, India, maybe so. Which is this is like we're all think about Damn, the, right, the scope right. of Asian jail systems. Yeah, we just saw what happened with Britney, even though it's not the same. But no, nah, it could be. You pissed on a lady on the plane. You fuck around, go to jail for a year down there. <laughs> what, what are you here for? Piss. Piss. Pissed on her. Pissy bitch. Oh. Just go sit over there in the corner, <laughs> in the corner with Robert. No, yeah, that's that's what I was about to say. The same way, like if you're a, a child molester and you get in, they do what they need to do. I wonder if he got in if they just pissed on him. Uh, probably. He do fucking deserves it. Stop yeah. getting so sloppy he, drunk. He deserves all the piss. Yep. Okay. That sounds crazy. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that all anymore. Right, that's sick. But no, nah, man, that story, like I said, just insane story there. But uh, glad to see some justice. Hopefully. Cause this nigga like Come on dog Stop getting Like everybody Stop getting so sloppy drunk That you can't control yourself That's rich That's that's rich uh, That's that's rich privilege Bro that shit is sick though Why he thought he could get so sloppy drunk And do what the fuck he wanted Sick bro it's, I wanna be that rich though And it's crazy It happened everywhere It don't matter Cause you know That happens a lot over here We see a lot of privilege You know when you got money When you high up When you high ranking This guy was a vice president Of Wells Fargo We've never gotten to the point Of piss though Never, but still, I'm just saying these guys think that they can get away with everything. That's, that's the point that I wanted to make. So yeah, but it's just crazy to see that everywhere. You know what I mean? But uh, insane story there, man. We could really move on. And each, all right. The last thing I was gonna uh, get go into, ahead, go just ahead. because we were talking about the privilege, he knew what he did and tried to beg her not to make a complaint. Sick, nigga. Sick. She is sitting here in your piss right now, <laughs> and all these people smell it, bro. We on a flight, like you said, from JFK to India. It's probably. It's definitely 10 plus hours. Got to be, right? Maybe. I don't know how close that shit is, but that's a long flight. And I don't want to be on a long flight uncomfortable, but I don't want to be on a long flight with somebody that smells like piss. Bro. What if the flight was like turbulent so they wouldn't <laughs> let her go up to the, the overhead and change on her clothes? Like, no, no, no. You can't go up there. No, 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 no. I don't know, man. I don't know, but that's funny, though. That's hilarious. That's wild. Crazy story. Crazy story. <clears throat> We're into another crazy story. There's a Louisiana man who was arrested and jailed for a week based off of facial recognition tech that was used. Mm -hmm. However, he had never been to Louisiana. Wow. Okay. I'll read a point of uh, the article I have. It says, a Georgia man spent almost a week in jail after Louisiana police wrongly identified him as a fugitive um, using facial recognition software. I didn't even know that they were doing shit like this to identify people yeah, these days. Yeah, yeah, me neither. Um, but what it said is Randall Reed, age 28, was driving to his mother's home for Thanksgiving celebrations when local police pulled him over and arrested him. Using facial recognition software, the Jefferson uh, blah, 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 had identified Reed as a suspect of spate, uh, a, I'm sorry, a suspect in a spate of thefts. $10,000 worth of Chanel and LV purses had been stolen. The problem was that he had never been to Louisiana. He... <clears throat> Do you want to start there? Yeah, yeah. I'll say we can start there. Um, that's some bullshit. Absolutely. Just off the off the muscle. Um, I understand you don't want to advance in technology. If if these systems actually work, if they're not defaulted, because come the, on now, this I, is faulty, bro. I don't think facial recognition is something that we should be using now. No, if we're no, able to start no. use, like, if every traffic stop they had a pad and they were like, put your thumbprint on this. Mm -hmm. And they were able to track your thumbprint mm -hmm. on shit like that and, and do things like that. Yeah, yeah. That makes a little bit of sense. Right, right. Don't do facial recognition because yeah, that's bullshit. you know how many niggas might look like each other? No, that's, that's such bullshit. And what they said, even in details like this, um, I, I want to be able to, to find exactly what it was. There were clear physical differences between Reed and the actual perpetrator in the surveillance. They said, for example, there was a 40 pound difference in body weight okay. and Reed had a mole on his face that okay. the other suspect didn't <clears throat> okay. have. OK, I see what this is now. It, this is Louisiana down south shit. This is okay. racism. OK, they didn't even pro know that to check for any of that information. Yeah, yeah. They ran facial recognition, said, oh, this matches this. Oh. Put him in a car. That's OK. They didn't even check. They just said put him in a car. Wow. And this man spent a week in jail until all the information was analyzed and they mm -hmm. found out that that was not the right guy. Mm -hmm. They got the right guy and then released him. And then it says here uh, in the jail for that week, he was not eating, not sleeping. I was thinking about these charges, not doing anything because I don't know what's really going on. They didn't even try to make the right ID. They didn't even ask this guy his name. Probably they didn't even ask for ID. That's what, crazy. What I will say is. Damn. This sounds terrible, but that week in jail is going to warrant this man millions in a civil suit. Yep. He's going to get wait. millions of dollars. Yeah, we're going to come in and report this within the next year that he won a civil suit with a, the whatever. Let me see what, what county this was. 
the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office. They gonna give <laughs> yeah, a, ass. Oh my! They gonna give that nigga back the ten thousand in Chanel and LV bags. Oh yeah, that and more. And more. I need at least. There's some M's with this one. I need at least a, like not a hundred. Uh, I need at least a million dollars. Yeah, this a, this a, at least at least one M at the minimum. I know it's only a week in jail. <laughs> yeah, but. No, fuck that. I've been completely inconvenienced. Yeah, bro, because honestly, with, with cases like these, because it's, it's the sheriff or it's a county or it's a state, who knows how far it gets, um, these things are expensive. A week in jail? This man probably <clears throat> lost his job. Right, right. But I'm saying, like, um, outside of that, like, I need I need a lot to cover me for the expenses. Yes, yes. I know what you're talking about, and too. And I also need enough to cover me, like, bitch, you better pay me all my money. Dog, I'm I'm thinking about, like... Now I have. Now I'm gonna calculate how much money I mm-hmm. made in a year. Mm-hmm. When was he arrested? Because if this man was arrested in January, mm-hmm. imagine if I just lost this job. Now I get to calculate my entire year's worth of salary mm-hmm. that's gonna be allocated Look into this you. lawsuit. Look at you. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. my god. On y'all ass. I'm going <laughs> fucking crazy with my health care. Come on. Because man. I lost my benefits. Right. Uh, all, everything everything bro Look and you, you know i'm not a lawyer yeah. so these lawyers are gonna make sure he's he's milked pause yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoa <laughs> they're gonna make sure he's what <laughs> milked milked pause nah 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 i don't know i couldn't you, you did that to yourself i, I would have let you make it <sighs> I would let you make it. Uh, but I just want to get back to the software, though, bro, because, you know, we have conversations about that shit all the time. And we do. I, like I said, I understand us trying to advance things. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm with that to a certain extent right here. I don't like this, bro. Like this is inhumane to a point, especially when you don't even try to ID and you notice differences. I don't even understand how this even like they didn't notice the differences. They didn't even check. That's bullshit, bro. A mole on the face. Come on, y'all. Nigga. 40 pounds. If you can tell 40 pounds, 40 pounds right, right. from a surveillance camera, mm-hmm. you can dog, tell that shit in person. Get the Absolutely. fuck out of here. Absolutely. They just wanted to, to pin the tail on some donkey. I'm not trying to hear that, bro. But like like you were saying, the I know we're trying to advance, but there needs to be something specific. Like if there was something in our eyes where mm-hmm. you could get some sort of DNA recognition, something like that, that mm-hmm. would make sense to where you could scan that immediately and get it. But what can you get besides he looks like that? And that's all they go by. Um, no, nah, bro. It just got to be better. I don't give a fuck what type of software they develop. Um, if it's robot, facial recognition, like it just got to perform. It has to be accurate. We can't use these things if it's, if it's going to be treated like this. We have something accurate, but niggas just think that we need more. I get mm. technologic in, uh, advancements. Right. We have thumbprints. Every time you are booked into jail, that, that's the only thing. If you've never been booked into jail, and I've never been booked into jail, I mean, neither. your thumbprint is in the system. If you're a murderer or anything like that, right? And there are prints from the scene. If there's anything from a scene, it's gonna track right back. Right. We should just get, like stick just, to using yeah, that. Just keep using that. It's now, easy. I, I know it's probably the instances where like, well, what if there was no DNA left in the scene, but there was a camera? Mm-hmm. Now we can use the facial recognition. No. No. Sorry. I don't agree with it, man. Um, like we said, I, I get it now. I'm glad we got to break that down because I really just thought this was, you know, really they messed up. But no, I'm like, okay, this is a south ass down south town in Louisiana. No, they fucked up on purpose. Yeah, bro. Not not on I'm purpose, not, not, but they were just looking to, yeah, to put somebody in jail. Yeah, I'm not going for that shit, bro. It's crazy. Um, We can move on from this too when you're ready. Yeah, let's do it. All right, this is probably the biggest and happiest news of the fucking week. This is great. We came in on Thursday and gave our love, our support, and our prayers out to the family, friends, teammates, and and loved ones of DeMar Hamlin Mm -hmm. and himself, DeMar Hamlin, Mm -hmm. because we know he had just gone into cardiac arrest on last Monday during the, uh, let me get this right, the Bills (laughs) Bengals game. All right, I said Chiefs last time. That's fucking crazy. But, um, we know how scary that was. It was a life or death situation. Over the end of the week, we started to uh, see reports that DeMar Hamlin's eyes have opened, mm-hmm. that he's been able to write messages to the team, or he he wrote a message to the medical staff right. asking who won the game. Crazy. When I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh, not mm-hmm. only does he have brain activity, <clears throat> he knows what the fuck is going on. Yeah, cognitive. Yes, he's yeah. cognitive. Mm-hmm. Then I heard... They've pulled the tube out of his throat. Right, right, right. That that one was the biggest for me. That man. was the biggest. Because at that point, he was able to breathe on his own. He was able to breathe on his own. Right, right. And then we heard a report that 
he was talking with his family and in a uh, medical staff. Mm-hmm. I said, "Oh, this guy is a walking fucking mirror." I don't care if he's. We haven't heard anything about walking, talking. I mean, not walking, talking, but walking anything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. The fact that this man is alive is the greatest fucking thing I've ever seen. This is a miracle. Yeah, bro. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. This this last seven days was it was crazy. You was know what scary. I mean? it, it, this was this this last week was man. It was scary. Like I can't even think of a, a good word because no word could even match the feeling that this last week it was gave horrifying. To the world like not even football. This this was the world, dog. It was almost one of those, and I hate putting it in in this type of thing because I I don't want to compare it to. 9-11 at all but when 9-11 happened it united the entire country mm-hmm. like everybody stood together mm-hmm. in this this feeling of mm-hmm. of togetherness and love and all right. this this happened with damar hamlin every every day since the hit it just seemed like the entire sports community and now the entire world had mm-hmm. banded together to make sure this man was all right no man, you couldn't be more right. That's that was a great analogy there, um, for for sure. Like the impact, COVID uh, type shit. Yeah, the impact. You know what I'm saying? The reaching now, like the unity. Uh, it was great, man. I, I enjoyed that because you know, just thinking in sports really quick. You know, you saw other players supporting. You saw other fans. Yes, supporting. Like you know, just shit that you don't see. You know how niggas are about their teams, bro. It could get ugly. Uh, everybody said fuck that. Everybody had a number three. It meant something, man. Um, and it was just good to see him. Like like I said, the last the week was crazy. But as you start getting these reports day by day, man, it just brings life to you, man. Because, you know, this is a guy who has his life. He's going to make it. You know, whether or not he plays again, who knows? I don't, who gives a fuck? I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But he's alive. And another big thing in this that you don't see in instances like this where the world stands behind one person. Mm-hmm. That person normally does not get to live to see the love mm. that was spread. Like, I say, like when Take passed or when anybody passes and there's this huge swarm of love, mm-hmm. they don't get to see that. They're gone already. This man got to see how many fucking people really got behind the, yeah. wor- the, the world. world. Like, the world. Like, look at my hand. I got chills. Chills, bro. No, I see. That's crazy. The world got behind yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Like, and he's able to wake up mm-hmm. and be like, oh, I'm really loved. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't give a fuck if, because I know a year or two now, there are going to be those people that be like, we're, we're y'all DeMar Hamlin fans now. Yo, we're, 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 we're. <laughs> we are here behind you now. And he will never forget this shit. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is probably the greatest thing in the world for him to wake up to. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine, like you said, waking up and then finding out and then seeing, yeah. Cause his uh, his charity, you know, like we mentioned before, the donations poured in. That got up to like ten plus million, bro. Like this is like getting to hover around at your funeral. Man, imagine waking up and getting that shit, bro. That's that news. Uh, and I'm not trying to be morbid by saying that, but I mean, like, <laughs> nah. just imagine, like, if you got to go to your funeral and see all the people that showed up and how many mm-hmm. people really cared. He got to he got to do that. He got he got his flowers type shit. He got to see it. You know, hell That's yeah, a different feeling. Oh, nothing but me, 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 yeah. me, 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 me. That's a different feeling, bro. Imagine waking up, you know, out of that state, uh, being able to talk, being, you know, understanding what's going on. Um, and they tell you, you know, the, the president called today just to see how he was doing type type shit. Excuse me? <laughs> what, wait, what do you mean? Joe Biden? You know or like the saying? president of the Buffalo Bills? Right. <laughs> right, right. Like, let's be specific here. Uh, but no, just just things like that, you know. Um, I'm just glad, man. This, this situation is just, it's been amazing, bro. And then... Um, the game, so you know the, the football has to go on. Absolutely, I mean, yeah, of course, it has to go on. It's a business. The show must go on. Uh, the Bills, bro, on on Sunday, Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon. You know they had their first game since this situation. Happened. It wasn't the Bengals game. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So yeah, they canceled that. Yeah, um, that's that's water under bridge mm-hmm. now. But uh, game against the Patriots, man, on the very first play on a kickoff. You know, um, the Bills they won a toss. They received. They took the kick back, man. The first play of the game took it to the crib. Bro. For that boy DeMar. Stop playing. Yeah, dog, like shit. Like, I had tears in my eyes, like for real, like watching that shit, bro. Like, that shit just, that's just God. You know what I mean? Like, it's just no better feeling than that. I'm not trying to make a joke. I wasn't watching the game. Uh huh. Please don't tell me when they ran into the, the end zone, they kissed it and put like the hand up to the sky. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> I really can't. If they kissed it and put the hand up to the sky, like, oh. I can't say, bro. Um, I can't say. Why, why would, like? Why would you do that? See, like now I got to get dark because we know Demar is okay. Um, <laughs> have you seen? Uh, remember the Titans? Yeah. I've seen so many people calling this nigga Gary Bertier. 
Come on, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> You were supposed to laugh. <laughs> Kari laughed. I did. Now they man. think I'm a terrible person. I did laugh. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I did laugh. Golly, move like, on. Come on. All right. Javante. <laughs> no, nah, but do we have anything else about DeMar? Uh, no, nah, man. Just once again, just so happy for that situation. He's actually went back to social media. He gave um, he gave like a speech, you know what I'm saying, to update himself. He's trying to make, Kari, What's up? why are you trying to make me be dark, bro? I'm not. You're doing that to yourself, man. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to just read what DeMar said. Go man. back. Damar said, when you put real love out into the world, it comes back three times as much. The love has been overwhelming, but I'm thankful for every single person that prayed for me and reached out. We bring the world together behind this. If you know me, you know this is only going to make me stronger. Stop. <laughs> Stop right there. Say that sentence again, Corey. <laughs> if you know me, you know this game only going to make me stronger. I'm on a long road. Keep praying for me. What does he mean by, if you know me, this is only going to make me stronger? Uh, returning into football, maybe? Kari. <laughs> Kari. What? What, dog? You asked the question. I DeMar just Hamlin needs to sit the fuck down. Yeah, man. But, like, come on, man. That's all he know. Of course, that's what he's going to say, man. But I'm with you. We don't know that yet. Yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't know, man. Yeah, <laughs> we do. <laughs> Corey. <laughs> My fault, doctor. This this guy's everything. Okay. Nah, bro. I, it is, it I, would be, I know, like, bro, cardiac arrest. Like, you He made the tackle. He didn't you, even get right. hit. You can't put yourself back in a situation like that. Yes, I get you, bro. I'm just going off of what he said. I know, I know. But my, my last question would yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or my last statement would be, it would be fucked up if any team let him play. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No for team sure. like that's like that's like continuing to give drugs to someone you know was about to OD. Like he's an addict. Yeah. I'm I'm not gonna put you at risk like this. <laughs> yeah, There's yeah. there should be no team in the NFL that should be willing to pick him up. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true, bro. Do him a solid and give him a fucking front office or a coaching position. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully he still get his bread. I don't know. He'll still get his bread. Hopefully. Not that bread, but that's why I say you never know situations like that. Insurance and things, like people people may not have policies on themselves like they should. Like it could get tricky. The, the organization could be a bitch, bro. They could really try to hold. That's what I'm saying. But you would think when I look at niggas like Ryan Shazier. Right, right. That's what I say. And I was gonna get to that as well. Like the Steelers took care of their people. The Bills are a great organization from top to bottom. So I don't expect that. I'm just saying I don't I mean, I hope that's not the case. Yeah. Well, I think the NFL would have one hell of an issue on their hands if yeah. two to three to year, like two to three to four years went by, yeah, yeah. and they heard that there were some financial issues Demar Hamlin was having. Mm -hmm. I agree. That would be a fucking issue. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, but I don't think I have too much on it besides the fact that we are I'm so happy. happy. So that happy, man bro. is blessed. So happy. Though. Blessings rained down on that man. So happy. Um. I can't say it enough. Couldn't be happier. Yeah. Could not be happy because <laughs> now that he's okay, I did not I did not see this being this successful this fast. This fast. Yeah, this bro. Fast. This is a week. Um and he was really actually good before getting to, you know, the seven days. So yeah. It's it crazy. Was, it was because and um I was talking to some of my family about this too, how fast they were able to get out on that field. Yes. And they had like not only CPR, like he was getting like the static shock like yeah. immediately, like that's not normal. Yeah, shout out to that medical staff. Shout out to those coaches. That Amazing. The hospital being nearby, like we said, man. A lot of things, um, you know. Worked in his favor, for yeah, sure. I was going to say, happy for that. Um, but also, I'm glad you mentioned that, man, because um, there was actually, I was watching, like, the NFL countdown before the games come on. Um, and one of the reporters was like, man, just learn CPR. Fuck it. I, I thought that I, I don't care what position you are in in your life. Yes, just, I thought that just, that night. Just take a CPR class, bro. And, and every other years, like every other few years, if you haven't performed it on somebody, re up yourself on it because you never know how much in like handy mm -hmm. that could come. Yeah. So yeah, I just wanted to say that because I, I we should make that a goal for ourselves, bro. Absolutely. Let's, let's do that for real because um when he said it, it hit me because bro. You never know. And it's, even if it's somebody that you do know or that you do not know, like, bro, you could save somebody's life. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's heavy, I know, but, like, that hit me, bro. I was like, bro, we, got, we need to take a CPR class, like, for real. Yeah, no, for sure. Let's do that, for sure. <clears throat> All right, man. I mean, I'm ready to get out of huh? Demar Hamlin yeah, if yeah. you are. 
Uh, shout out to him and his family, though. Um, the last thing I had was the Javante Davis fight. Right, right, right. You did mention this earlier uh, that you watched it, correct? Yeah, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I watched what I could. He was fighting Hector Garcia. Mm-hmm. I was very, very, very <laughs> high. Faded. Everybody, like I said, every time the canvas shook, them niggas turned into fucking <laughs> elastic dolls. <laughs> but it was a good night. Javante ended up winning in the TKO. Mm-hmm. Um, Round nine, right? I believe. Yeah, it wasn't actually one of those he went down type things. It was he was punching him so much towards the end of the round, the bell rings, and Hector Garcia goes over to the side, and he's so out of it that his team has to call it before the next round even mm-hmm. comes in. Mm-hmm. But it, it was an incredible fight. It was an, it was a really good card. Um, it started at about 7 or 8 p.m., depending on whether you're like Central Standard or Eastern Time. Central, it started at 7. But Javante didn't come on until almost midnight. That was one God of the damn. things. Bro, and me being on the Mid- shrooms. Midnight? Are you kidding me? It started at 7 o'clock and he didn't fight till midnight? No, he did not fight until at what least, I'm fuck? sorry, at, at least 11.30 or 40. What? Yes. It took that long. Corey, and for me being Whoa. on those fucking shrooms, Corey, do you know how long that was for me? Damn. It was a school It was a school day <laughs> in my head before that nigga went on. Nah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. I would have been pissed. I couldn't be pissed. I mean, I'm just saying, like, imagine if you if you were sober. That would have upset I would have went home. Yeah, I would have been pissed. Come on, like, man. come on now, especially if I'm out, yeah, for sure, like, out somewhere watching. I'm going to the crib, bro. This is bullshit. Um, but I didn't get to watch the fight. I was at the Mavs game. Um, but I wanted to get to something that you did say about, you know, what happened, what unfolded. You know, they had to call it because his eye was fucked up. Um, but I, I've seen the highlights and in pre-production. I mentioned this to you. That nigga punches so hard. Javante Davis. Oh, my goodness. Packs the fuck out of a punch and if you can tell every single punch he winds up and comes under with his hands like even if it's not an under i mean even if it's not an uppercut Mm -hmm. he swings all the way around before he connects yeah bro i would hate to get punched by this nigga man so much power for um because he's not a heavyweight boxer you know that's just the the norm that you you know the heavyweights punch the hardest you know you hear that a lot but this is a is he lightweight what's where what is i believe he's a lightweight light light, uh, i mean what a lightweight, I believe. Lightweight. Uh, but no, nah, bro, like, he punches so damn hard. So it was just crazy to see, like, the nigga I was so swelled up that he had to stop the fight. It wasn't. It was It was part of an eye swelling. But okay. the other part was his vision went out because he got punched oh, so yeah. hard. He said he couldn't see. Yeah, he, he said he couldn't see. And by the time that his vision came back, they called the fight. Man, oh man. Javante quoted the video. He said, Damn, I punched that hard. Yes, you do. Yes, sir. nigga. You are a S- sir. You are a killer. Sir, let me holler at you one time. Why are you punching these niggas so hard? So much passion and hurt. Why, why are you punching down on these bitch ass niggas bro, like that? For real, bro. Tank. For I real. see why they call this nigga Tank. Yeah, bro. For sure. That I'm, nigga's a heavy hitter. What the fuck? That nigga hits so damn hard, bro. It's crazy. When I be watching his highlights, I be like, oh. My goodness, I like you said, I would not want to get punched by bro. Fuck no, that's insane. But uh, shout out to him for another dub, still undefeated, another knockout 28 no, 28 no, bro. He has another fight already scheduled in April. Yeah, this was Hector Garcia. This was kind of the warm up for Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia, yep, Ryan Garcia is the highly anticipated GTD fight, uh, yeah. Javante Davis, guys. But this, this is the one. Like, yes, everybody's sir. been waiting on Arrow to fight Terrence Crawford. Mm-hmm. This is the same type of level for this lightweight division. Yeah, man. That's going to be a crazy fight. Vegas already, right? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. Oh, crazy. Man. Um, crazy was the fight. You saw Meek Mill? Yeah. Meek Mill, from what I was told, got into an altercation with somebody or somebody's crew mm-hmm. uh, cor- a ringside of the fight mm-hmm. because he was screaming how the fight wasn't going to go 12 how Javante was going to knock a nigga out hmm. before the fight ended. Was he not correct? No, he was very correct. Oh, okay. He was, he was very, very correct. Oh, my fault, my there were some niggas in the building that weren't, they weren't having that shit. shit. Yeah, they, yeah. they weren't trying to hear that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how shit talk goes, yeah, especially yeah. with us niggas. Money, loud. Money involved. Liquor. Liquor. They've been oh, drinking shit. all night. You we right. the rich niggas that bring the bottles into this you motherfucker. Right. They came from backstage. You right. So they've been drinking all night. Mm. Emotions, money, ego is in the fucking building. You want to do what? Let's do it. Let's do it then. Right here. I don't give a fuck. It's a fight going on. <laughs> so it's some niggas trying to fight yeah, yeah. Meek Mill at this point, like a crew of niggas. All you see is Wallow pop 
pop his head up from the top. I'm watching it live too, and I'm okay. on the shrooms, and okay. I care a lot about Wallow. So I'm like, man, you better shoot my nigga. Yeah, you actually, you actually seeing a text saying that. Um, <laughs> nah, real talk, bro. Um, but Wallow jumps over the entire crowd to mm-hmm. try to protect Meek Mill from fighting niggas. Right. To which Meek Mill's crew, I guess, storms out the building, shit like that. Then the fight ends within the next two minutes. So all I'm thinking, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, damn. I know that probably fucked you up. So right after Meek's fight, the actual fight ended? Yeah. Right after that, you probably thought that shit was like hours apart. The, no, the thing that really fucked me up, well, I, like I was like, okay, all these niggas are really heated and the fight just ended. The niggas that were about to fight, they ain't even got to the car yet. Oh, damn. So... All these niggas <laughs> is about to file out of this building. The parking lot type shit. Hell yeah, I already knew what the fuck was about to go down. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, let me just like keep watching. Then I kept watching the yeah, backstage yeah. shit. Gilly Wallow backstage after the fight with Javon Tam. Like, okay, these not they not leaving. Yeah. They leaving with their security. Yeah, yeah. You know when you get into a um, altercation with wherever you at, and niggas say meet me outside. That's how that situation unfolded, like that quick. Like niggas was outside already. It wasn't. I'm not gonna say they were outside already, but what I'm saying was. Javante's fight was the end of the card. So after that fight's over is when everybody's going to leave. I know what you mean. Yeah. It was within five minutes that fight happened. So them niggas were already walking out. These were the type like, oh, we're going to be at the car. Yeah. We're going to be at the car, my nigga. Wait just, just wait. Yeah. Sheesh. Um, but no, it wasn't It wasn't that kind of evening. Good. I'm you know glad. What I'm Shout out to Wallow for, you know, stepping up. That's a Philly connect, obviously. But he want to see niggas not do that shit. Yeah, but like, he's, you know, you know his story. I'm not going to get into his story. We know his story, bro. He really prides himself on not letting shit like that happen. So And I'm, keeping the youth out of that yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm glad he was able to be there, step in, and handle the situation the right way. You know what I mean? Another thing, um, Meek Mill stated this morning that, of course, you know, he's from the, the he just got out in the last five to six years. Um He's on the prison reform tip. He was like, yo, y'all know me. Y'all know that I would not be out there just trying to start, start shit yeah, with yeah. random people. He was like, I've been nothing but respectful to everybody. And those people got out of line with me. He was like, all I was doing was talking my shit. Like, and you know how boxing is. They yeah. screaming at the at Come the boxing now. ring saying Come that on. the shit ain't going to go 12 rounds. Right. And niggas got to fighting from there. Niggas got offended. For sure. I'm on Meek Mill's side. I ain't gonna me lie too. to you. Me too. Of course. <laughs> I'm always gonna stand with the black man. Yeah, I'm rocking with Meek. Fuckers, we talking about. Fuck all that. But um, nothing too much to see at that point. I just wanted to go over because I'm sure it was super, super big on the headlines mm-hmm. uh, on, mm-hmm. on Sunday. But but great fight, great, great fight, great saying. fight night. Okay. I, I'm sure everybody had a hell of a time. Of um, hopefully nothing transpires in the future off of that shit. But. That was all I really had to talk about. Yeah, that was all I really had too, man. <sighs> was that it? Was that it for all the topics? That's it, man. 202. All right, man. That was episode 202. We got songs of the week, so we're going to go ahead and get out of here. It was your boy, Roderick. Yes, sir. Jakari, we out. All right, man. Let's go.